So this is a small update to our product water stamp. And here we're just going to go over some of the new features that we have. So first of all, on all of our existing materials, we now support um, stretching and deformation. So you can not only rotate and place this anywhere on the water surface, but you can also like kind of stretch them. And yeah, same as before. I mean, the issue before was that stretching it would kind of rotate and break the thing. But now you can have like kind of weird uh, foam of all kind of shapes and sizes anywhere you want. Uh, just a quick thing to show up over here is that for whatever reason, if some of the foams kind of disappear, we're just going to open up this uh, material instance over here. Just enable custom depth only mask. We're not quite sure why this isn't happening, but yeah, this kind of thing here needs to be ticked and just adjust the tiling. And there you go. The reason why this isn't moving is because we have distortion here just kind of changed quite a bit. So we just need to increase the tiling. And there we go. The foam is wiggling. So uh, this is all stuff on our current demo map. So to show up the kind of cooler new stuff, let's go to our demo map version 2. <laughs> so uh, the map here looks a bit different because the lighting is, let's adjust this to something a bit more normal. But also this material is a single layer water-based material, so something a lot more standard for your water system now. Uh, this old map was using a translucent material that was made to look like water. Uh, this is the map version 2 is the more sort of newer approach. And here you will see that our new water stamp materials now support shadows. Like for uh, the massive waves over here. And oh, I guess this is why we had the brightness here set to negative 1. So you can actually see the foam here going on a bit. And yeah, this is kind of like the major difference. Uh, you could see that it has the nice parallax effect for the foam. It supports normals. If we find our sun, directional light, and rotate it, you could see the foam receiving sort of normals as expected. And yeah, the location where you will find these new materials, if you go to base materials version 2, and you have regional water advanced, which is these sort of kind of wind patches that you see here, and they also support shadows. Foam materials for the localized sort of uh, still foam, and the animated kind of wave foam, which they kind of scroll down and yep. Next up, you have the, with the flat sort of color, which is this. Uh, let's just see if we can adjust the color a bit. Is this the correct material instance? Nope. There we go. And yeah, it's also kind of receiving shadows. There is some sort of accuracy limit to the type of shadows that you're going to receive, and we're going to go over these a bit later on. But more importantly, we now also support Unreal's vanilla water system. Oh, also, you might notice that some things like the localized normals don't really have the new version because they don't need to support shadows, really, because they already did in a sort of way. So let's see how these work with our with the standard vanilla Unreal water now. So here we are on the standard sort of water test map for Unreal's water system. And let's add some water stamps to it. So we're going to go to our base meshes and we're going to grab this box. This is the best one to use for things like oceans and rivers that have like big displacement kind of waves. We're going to scale it up a bit. And now just to be safe when placing something like this, it's always good to have the to make sure the collisions are off so make sure these are off whoops no collision shadows we don't want it to cast shadows or affect distance field lighting can never affect collisions so this is basically like a super blank kind of uh, uh, mesh decal that we're using and we're gonna apply uh, let's apply these materials because these are the most sort of complex we're gonna go with regional foam and we kind of have an original foam advanced underscore VA, which should work out of the box here. So 
soon as it computes. And there we go. We have our water stamp up and ready to go. But let's go with something from our standard kind of materials. And whoops. We're going to go with, again, original water foam, foam material. And we're going to go with, uh, let's go with this just for the sake of it. And it's not really showing up. So we're going to open up the material instance here. Whoops, don't need any of that. And let's see, we, we have a new sort of tick here that's called Unreal Vanilla Water. First, let's just enable this and we're going to enable it. And there we go. So right now, the tiling is a bit off. It's kind of clipping through the overall um, mesh mask that we're using. So we're just going to lower the tiling. And there we go. We have working water stamps on Unreal's water. And we can move this to the lake, to the river, and we can see it sort of automatically aligns with the water surface. Now, this is still being projected through the sort of box mask. So we, we kind of place this with our lake as a reference point. So right now, if we kind of move around it, we can see that it's kind of being clipped out. So to do that, we just need to move this a bit lower. And there we go. It's now working perfectly. So let's go back to our more advanced uh, sh shadow casting uh, foam and grab uh, sort of this. And see that it kind of looks a bit off right now. And that is because we are now casting and receiving shadows. Although these shadows that are being applied here are kind of done from the reference point of our um, decal mesh. So right now our mesh's floor is beneath the landscape, which means that it's being that it's receiving shadows from the landscape. Now this obviously isn't ideal for our foam. So to adjust this, we're simply going to, whoops, uh, let's get slightly more control over this. And just kind of shrink our box down a bit. And there we go. So now the bottom of our mesh is no longer clipping through the floor of the landscape and it's not getting shadow from the landscape. And now everything like normals and parallax and everything is working correctly as expected. So now if we were to place another random mesh, something like a, our favorite sphere, and just place it here, we can see that it is receiving shadows as expected. So that's something just to keep an eye on, is that when using shadows, they will be receiving sort of uh, from the perspective of the decal mesh, and in some cases, let's just hide the landscape real quick. Um, you could see that our shadow just became a lot more intense. And that is just because of the way that shadows work in general with water surface materials. If there is nothing beneath it to sort of affect the opacity, the shadow is really harsh. And if we bring back the landscape, we could see that we're receiving some of that light that's kind of bouncing from the landscape up and through the shadow. And that is kind of affecting the overall appearance. This is why our shadows in some of the other test maps may appear a bit more harsher or a bit less. And overall, this is pretty much it. So going back to our material, just to kind of open it up and see what's happening. You have the kind of, oh, you might see a new value here called opacity too. And that's just kind of an extra opacity kind of control here. And uh, yeah. All of these work with Waterline pretty much out of the box. Waterline does not need the Unreal Vanilla Water thing being turned on. And yeah, this is pretty much it. Translucent Mapping 2.0, something that we can quickly demo, is basically removing the fix for our stretching. So this is the stretching that we can do now. And if for whatever reason you want to wish to use the old system, The old system does not work with the vanilla water. <laughs> so that's another thing. It'll basically kind of like spin the mesh as well and really make it difficult to use unless you have uh, this thing on. And also you need to have custom depth only mask for this. I believe if you disable it, 
it will not show up. Oh, it does, but let's see. I think the issue was that right now it will render, yeah, on top of things like the sphere as well, which could be useful. For example, if you are placing this as a sort of shore wave and you'd want it to travel over to the landscape a bit as well. But again, you might have to compensate a bit for the lighting for that. It's not really meant for it. And uh, oh yeah, our water became a bit kind of dimmer because our box started intersecting with the mesh as well. So yeah, these are a couple of things to keep a track on. And uh, yeah, thanks for staying with us for so long. Now go make off some things. <laughs>